We need to talk. Sure. Let's talk. It's about my mother. Or rather, about what she found. I didn't tell you this before, because I didn't know if I could trust you. I, I think I know why they took my mom. She was dangerous to NAR. It wasn't a coincidence. She saw something. Even took a photo. You see, when NAR first came here, they pretended to be friendly. They offered free examinations to several sample shells, and even promised my mother medical assistance. It was all a ruse, of course. My mother was invited to their lab, and she ended up seeing something she wasn't supposed to. She was inside their lab? You should have told me about this sooner. Do you know what she saw? They were running experiments with Chernobyl light on human subjects. All volunteers, of course. Soon after that, people started vanishing, my mom included. Do you still have the photo? No. My mom always kept it on her. Is there any other proof to back up your mother's account? No, but I can't see my mother lying about something like that. She only ever had the Samochelle's best interests at heart. My mother was the least selfish person I've ever known. She wanted to help everyone who suffered from the Chernobyl disaster in any way she could. She paid the ultimate price for her kind heart. Now, I have to find out why and make this right. I get it. Really? She sounds like an amazing lady. How can I help? I know it's a lot to ask, but I need to know what my mother saw in that lab. I need you to go to Lenin Square and get inside. There must be something there incriminating NAR. This will help your search for Tatiana as well. If she's in the zone, she must somehow be part of all of this. It won't be easy, but I'll definitely try. Igor, a moment, please. I heard you talking to our she-wolf here. You don't want to go to Lenin Square. I don't think you're ready. Who knows what you'll be up against? I think I've proved myself quite capable, no? You can harness the power of Chernobylite, an impressive feat. But what if they find a way to disable it? You're probably right. What do you propose? I'll do it. With a broken arm? Besides, we have no idea what we'll find. It's very likely we'll need my scientific expertise to assess the situation. I'm not a complete imbecile, you know. I can tell the difference between a centrifuge and a... I don't know, kitchen robot? Of course you can, Olivier. Don't take this the wrong way. But I still think I should be the one to go. Sure thing, Mum. And don't worry. I've got my sweater. You've got some issues, don't you? Okay. Now's not the time to get distracted. Locate the lab and try to reach it without drawing attention. You don't want to fight all these guys at once. Thank you. 
Uh, 50 mils of ferric chloride. Who? Who are you? What are you doing in here? That man on the phone. Who was it? You're... You're Kiminyuk. Dear God, please don't hurt me. I asked you a goddamn question. My boss, you mean? I, 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 I don't know his real identity. Uh, almost nobody does, I swear. Do you really want to play it this way? I can see you're scared, and rightfully so. But it seems you're deliberately trying my patience. No, not at all, sir. Uh, please, I, I can't tell you what I don't know. But I can tell you other things. Just ask. Just don't kill me. I can be useful. You'll see. Vanya, my patience is wearing thin. Where are those damned chemicals? Answer him. But casually. Relax. Yes, yes, I, uh, I'm sorry. I'll send them right away. Apologies for the delay. Spare me the excuses and move. I need that core diazoboxide and I need it now. You two, continue without me. I hope for your sake you don't screw this up. It would be best if you forgot I was ever here. Of course, of course. I won't tell a soul.
Look at the tissue structure. This used to be a liver, Vanya. Finally. Who the hell are you? What did you do with Vanya? Stay very still if you want to live. Please don't hurt us. We're scientists. We... Yeah, so was Dr. Mengele. Are you performing a vivisection without anesthesia? Administering shots of typhus? What are you doing exactly? I really want to know. No, nothing like that. We're not beasts. We treat our patients as humanely as possible. But you have to understand that... Scientific advancement requires sacrifice. <laughs> Other people's sacrifice. You make it sound sinister. But yes, everything we do is for the greater good. How does it work? Are you shooting these poor souls up full of Chernobylite? I can't talk about that. The NDA we signed is very strict. The penalties... Did you just say NDA? Are you for real? Stop being a corporate stooge and start thinking about your own life. Sure, sure, you're right, of course. We started out giving them shots, but that was just the first stage. We're way past that now. <laughs> uh-huh. It was, you see. The fatality rate was... Uh, it didn't bring the desired results. We've moved from administering nano-solutions to directly editing human genomes to enhance them with Chernobylite. We've developed our own Chernobylite CRISPR. Your patients or subjects, whatever you call them. Especially the locals. What happened to them? Which ones? There were many patients here. Some of them didn't make it past the final phase. The others, we don't know. Don't let him dodge the question. Make him talk. Look, please, can we all try to stay calm? Let us explain. Modifying genomes is only the first step. Next, we induce a state of superconsciousness in the subject's gamma brain waves. It's basic neurology. The sympathetic nervous system begins to release enormous amounts of energy straight to the brain via the thalamic gate at the brainstem. When the thalamic gate opens, the energy flows to the pineal gland and... Well, there you go. I don't like to use this term, but it opens a third eye. A third eye? Right. Then what? Enhanced by Chernobylite, the pineal gland can do incredible things. Release all kinds of energy, and even influence physical objects, as in telekinesis. You're torturing people so they can bend spoons with their mind? What kind of quacks are you? This is all following the scientific method, believe me. These are closely monitored, replicable experiments. Anyway, when the subject is ready for the final stage, we put them in an induced coma. Contrary to what you might think, it's for their own good. Explain, and fast. What is this final stage? Our boss calls it communion. It's when the subject's gamma brain waves interact with Chernobylite's mental waves. Or, well, to tell you the truth, we don't know exactly what it is. Chernobylite is like a virus, in a way. It's not exactly inorganic matter, but neither is it a living organism. It's something in between. And it produces a type of brainwave, even though it clearly has no structured organic tissue. But what's the purpose of this communion? This is where it gets really interesting. You know that Chernobylite can be used to create wormholes, right? You've been doing it yourself. But these wormholes are special. Haven't you noticed? They're not a purely physical phenomenon. I don't understand. What else could they be? We know what singularities and the tunnels should look like. We know what they are in theory. But has anyone actually been inside one before? Bullshit. I've studied Chernobylite too. The exotic energy it contains is powerful enough to create quasi-black holes and passages between them. We thought so too, at first. But think about this. What if there was an organism, or a virus, 
an entity powerful enough to create its own singularities. No biological organism could encapsulate that kind of energy, or survive if it did. A living entity would be torn to shreds. But Chernobylite is not a normal biological organism, is it? We have no idea what it is. Just try and consider the possibility that the wormholes you're walking into are not something created outside of Chernobylite. They are Chernobylite. You're traveling through the veins and corridors of its multidimensional body. But what does that have to do with this communion thing? Isn't it obvious? We're trying to communicate with Chernobylite, or somehow influence it through the mental energy of our subjects. But getting inside this thing's mind, or whatever it is, must be a truly disturbing experience. You're fucking insane, both of you. You need to stay away from the morphine cabinet for a while. I've heard enough. Who's your patient here? I'm not sure, but it... She must have been carefully selected. Selected? How? Did she volunteer? Or was she maybe run down and captured by soldiers in the woods? Talk! I'm not familiar with the selection process. Our boss would know. But we know very little about him. What's your boss in charge of, exactly? The entire biotech division, pretty much everything Chernobylite related, but mainly the impact on human physical and psychological functions. Clustered, regularly interspaced, short, palindromic repeats. Hmm. How does this work with Chernobylite? It's similar to a standard gene editing tool. We take specialized protein from a certain bacteria, modify it with Chernobylite, and then target the exact genes we want to modify. Wait, I know more about physics than genetics, but CRISPR is usually done on embryos, right? And it takes time, sometimes even years, for mutations to show. Our boss developed his own methods. The process is applied directly in the subject's body. The speed of the mutations has increased exponentially. It no longer takes years, but weeks, sometimes mere days. Marvellous, isn't it? Enough. All I've got from you so far is a bunch of gibberish. I want to see the actual research. Where do you keep your data? All the research data? Check the database in this computer. Everything can be accessed from here. It's password protected, isn't it? Promise not to kill us and we'll tell you. Don't worry, I don't give a shit about you. Password. 23 hash 98 S dollar. Listen to me very carefully, Igor. This research, this data, it's too dangerous to exist. My people died because of it. Delete everything. It won't bring my mother back, but at least no one will profit from her death and the deaths of others. You need to download this research, Mousy. This is the Rat King's brain stash. It's dangerous, yes, and inhuman. But it could contain the key to defeating him. These guys are telling the truth. They really achieved something incredible here. Why did you do it? God damn you! You did good, Igor. We will turn this information into a weapon against the Rat King.
What's that smell? Did someone take a shit out here or what? Finish my contract, I'm going to grow a beard. Controlling Pripyat on...
arrived at his last known position. I have no time for this. Come out! Don't make it harder than it is. It is not going to end well for you. Why did you have to come back? is not going to end well for you. You're full of surprises, but it's not over yet. Patrolling Pripyat almost makes you wish you were someplace else. I should have brought that goddamn power bar. I'm starving.
I'm sorry, Olga. Nobody deserves to die so horribly. I was hoping for some good news, but perhaps I was foolish. My mother, these people, they were all just used, processed. How could anyone do something like this? Anyway, did you find anything of value? Not sure yet. Bizarre theories about Chernobylite, mostly. I don't know if I want to get into the details yet. Try me. I'm not a bookworm like you, but I'm not stupid either. Well, NAR seems to think Chernobylite is like a giant turtle that carries our universe on its back. They figure they can tame it and ride it wherever they want. Like a pet. A turtle? It's just a metaphor, but the scientific theory behind it is no less insane. Right. Uh, thanks for trying, I guess. Igor, just the stalker I wanted to see. What's up? Any luck going against the lurkers? The shadows, you mean? Oh, I'm doing what I can, but these creatures are both dangerous and unpredictable. You don't have to tell me that. They killed more than a few friends of mine. And from what I gather, NAR hasn't had any luck hunting them either. They're scary, but they can definitely be killed. Just stick the barrel of your trusty shotgun in its face, whatever that lump is between its shoulders, and pull the trigger. The shadows are able to make short jumps across space-time. That's what makes them so dangerous. But this isn't just about killing them. We can't keep spinning our wheels forever. We have to find out what they are and where they're coming from and put a stop to it for good. NER is part of the puzzle. I'm sure of it. Yeah, if you find out more, please let me know. Till then, I'll just keep kicking their shadowy asses. Hi, Olga. I'd be glad to. Fantastic. I'm ready to learn, oh great huntress. No jokes while we're training or I'll smack you upside the head. Got it?
Today I'll teach you how to stay alive a little bit longer. Knowing how to use a med kit, healing selves, and herbs is obviously important, but I won't be talking about that. What are you going to talk about, Olga? About resolve, grit, and determination. About having the guts to do what's right, whatever it takes. I get what you're saying, but what does it have to do with survival skills? You know the stories about people who achieve seemingly impossible feats in times of crisis? There's this tale about an old woman who somehow lifted a tram because her grandkid was stuck underneath. I'm sure that's an urban legend. Even so, with inner discipline and strength of conviction, you can sometimes surprise yourself. Let me ask you something. Are you willing to die for Tatiana? Without hesitation. Good. Now what you need to understand is that she doesn't need you to die. She needs you to live. Stay alive, Igor. It's the only way to see this through. What can I do for you, Professor? Hi, Olga. I'd be glad to... Actually... I'd love... Sh Matve taught me well, and I'm happy to pass on his knowledge. It's great to see you, Igor. I've got a fan-fucking-spastic plan that you need to hear. <laughs> You're right, of course. Sounds fan-fucking-exciting. Stop bitching and be grateful there's someone here to do the thinking when you're not around. Anyway, listen up. I think the time has come to kill off the biggest knobber of them all. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Who's on your shit list today? Drumroll, please! Da -la 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 -la. General Kozlov, the single biggest NAR twat of them all! Time to end his miserable life, pay back for what he did to my friends, and for his other shameful deeds, of course. Can't forget that. <laughs> You've got friends? That's new. Yeah, very funny. This fucker and his cronies iced my boys. Don't you ever joke about that. You fucking hear me? His lapdogs captured us, tortured us. I got lucky. They just beat the ever-loving shit out of me and left me to die. What happened? You never wanted to talk about it before. Having electrodes clipped to your dong is not something you want to relive with casual acquaintances. The five of us set up this warehouse together. It was me, Zena, Yuri, Ludmila, and Igor. Like yourself. We were the fucking Pripyat Five. Respected businessmen. And women. We provided, uh, essential goods and services for those who needed them. When NAR showed up, we tried to negotiate with them. But to this decrepit 20th century Kami Kozlov, we were just a bunch of hippie anarchists and drug dealers. Anyway, a perfect opportunity to exact revenge on this cocksucker's approaching. He's going to give some kind of motivational speech to his private army of knobbers outside in Lenin Square. This sounds like a real opportunity. Taking Kosov out is the only way to stop him from interfering with our plans. And to make him pay for his crimes, obviously. We are going to pull the Rat King's teeth one by one. Kozlov is one of his shiniest bangs and sharpest. But we should question him first. Killing him straight away would waste all the work we put into exposing his big plans, and the end of the world, and all that. I agree on one point. Kozlov must die. 
but we don't have time for fun and games. Just dispose of him quickly and get out. Maybe he does deserve to suffer, and perhaps he has some intel we could use. But the only way to make sure he can't interfere is to kill him right away. That's what I recommend. We need Kozlov alive. I'm open to suggestions. I've had an inspiration, Mousy. The great rat catcher appeared to me during my meditations and unveiled a plan. The Rat King's minions have made a nest in Energetic, one of the monuments to vanity from the previous area. <laughs> you seem surprised, but yes. The Rat King has been here for decades. I used to live here. I know the buildings, the streets, and I know Pripyat. I know you do, Mousy. You need to sneak into the Rat's den. It may seem daunting, but you must find the courage. Remember my teachings, and the rats won't notice you. The main entrance is well protected, but there is a side door. The perfect hole for a quiet and clever mousy like yourself. This is a great opportunity, mousy. The Rat King's minion will be vulnerable, alone, just waiting for you. The time has come to instill the fear of the great rat catcher in their black and shriveled hearts. Okay. I'm ready to talk to Kosov.
These must be the documents Professor Semenov left for me. This is General Kozlov of the NAR. You're coming with us quietly. No harm will come to you unless you force my hand. We disabled your technology. There's no way out of this building. Do yourself a favor. Surrender. It's the best option for everyone. I sent the Rat King closing in on you. Run! You have to do the right thing here, Igor. I know it's risky, but this could be our only opportunity to hurt them from the inside. Or at least learn something valuable. What the hell are you saying? You want me to surrender? Think like a partisan, will you? They underestimate you. Use it to your advantage. You'll find out a way to break free later. Okay, I give up. I want to talk to the people in charge. You overestimate your value, Professor Kaminiuk. Alpha team, take him. Notify me as soon as the patrollers return, Sergeant. Welcome back to the world of the living, Kaminiuk. At least for the moment. The name's Kozlov. I'm chief of NAR security. But perhaps you figured that out already. You know, I have plenty of crap to deal with every day. Guarding the exclusion zone against trespassers and lunatics who harass my men and refuse to let us conduct our business in peace. If you were just another dark tourist or stalker, or whatever these idiots call themselves nowadays, it would make my job much easier. But we both know that's not the case. Now, are you ready to drop the act and speak with me man to man? Piss off. You're not cut out for this, Mr. Kaminiuk. But if you insist on doing it the hard way, so be it. We're developing something big here. Something important. You know this. It's the reason you're here, isn't it? You may find this hard to believe, but all this is simply business. NAR paid the Ukrainian government a fortune to lease this land. Yet we are treated like a hostile occupation force. And for what? The zone is filthy with dangerous radiation. These busybodies would rather die of cancer than live a long, happy life tending their gardens. If anything, we're doing those crazy Samoshas a favor by keeping them out of harm's way. Wouldn't you agree? A patrol has returned, sir. They say they have news. Perfect. And about time. Excuse me, Kaminiuk. I will return momentarily.
What a stupid job. And I was stupid enough to take it. They're conducting experiments at the power plant. But why are they in such a hurry? After all, Chernobyl belongs to them.
Show yourself. Howdy, Igor. Hello, Olga. What, what's on your mind? Do we have any fresh fish? What? Why would you even ask that? I'm sick of canned food. I can't remember the last time we had something fresh. Okay. I'll let you know if I stumble across some clam chowder or caviar. Maybe you'd like a nice Chardonnay to wash it down? There's no call to be a wise ass. I know very well what can and cannot be found in the zone. But what would you say about setting up a fish farm? A fish farm? Yep, we could all use more protein in our diet. <laughs> Funny you should mention it. When I started working at the Chernobyl power plant, there was a rumor about the KGB breeding fish in the cooling pools. Really? Did the fish get big? Sure, huge. And they came pre-season too, with strontium-90. Not edible. I wouldn't chance fish farming anywhere in Pripyat, even today. I guess that means I'm stuck with cans. You and me both, sister. Uh, hi, Olga. I... Fantastic. I'm ready to learn, oh great huntress. No jokes, over. All right, it seems I've got my work cut out for me. This is gonna be extremely difficult, maybe even dangerous. I thought you were going to teach me how to effectively pack a bag. How could that be dangerous? Dangerous for my mental health. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Firstly, I want to address the fact that, for some reason, I'm the only one who can teach you the art of packing. Presumably because I'm a woman. I find that sexist, extremely, and offensive. I beg your pardon? Thank you. That said, I do have some tricks up my sleeve. Or should I say, up my bag. <laughs> uh, that I can share with you. Because frankly, Igor, when I look at the warehouse and how you furnish and organize it, it makes me weep. You weep? I never noticed. I'm weeping on the inside. My soul bleeds when I see this chaotic trash heap of grime and despair. No clean lines, no aesthetic, just a man cave reeking of testosterone. That's a little bit harsh, don't you think? But fear not, as a wise man once said, when the student is ready, the teacher reveals herself. And you're the teacher? Yes, I am. Here's the first secret. It's all in your head. What do you mean? The chaos in your head translates into the chaos in your inventory. The more organized you are, the clearer your thoughts, the purer your mind, the better your packing skills. But... 
But, but nothing. Don't argue. Don't deny it. Don't fight the truth. Just be silent and absorb. I'll let you think on this for a couple minutes or hours.